Hello everyone, my name is Karan Masku. Welcome to this video. So in today's video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem that is maximum meetings in a room. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? There is one meeting room in a form. Okay. There are n meetings in the form of SI and FI where SI is the start time of the meeting I and FI is the finish time of meeting I. So we have been given details about n meetings. Their start time and end time or finish time are given and there is only one meeting room. The task is to find the maximum number of meetings that can be accommodated in the meeting room. You can accommodate a, a meeting if the starting time of the meeting is strictly greater than the finish time of the previous meeting. Print all meeting numbers. So what we need to tell is we have only one meeting room. There are n meetings whose starting and ending time are given and we need to tell how many maximum meetings out of this we can uh, accommodate. Now in order to conduct one meeting the starting time of that meeting should be strictly greater than ending time of the previous meeting. Okay. So we need to tell how many maximum meetings can be uh, we can accommodate or conduct and we need to return the uh, meeting numbers of all those meetings in a vector okay. If two meetings can be chosen for the same slot then choose meeting with the smaller index in the given array. For example this is the start and end time of six meetings and I can conduct meetings 1, 2, 4 and 5. So my meeting 1 uh, is from 1 to 2, my meeting 2 is from 3 to 4, my meeting 4 is from 5 to 7 and meeting 5 is from 8 to 9. So the starting time of second meeting 3 is strictly greater than ending time of first meeting that is 2 and so on okay. Uh, then there is a second example you can have a look at it you don't need to read input or print anything your task is to complete the function max meetings which takes the array s f and its size n as inputs and returns the meeting numbers we can attend in short end order okay we need to return the maximum number of meetings which we can conduct and their numbers in short end order okay so for example here they returned what first meeting second meeting fourth meeting and fifth meeting okay the expected time complexity is n log n and expected auxiliary space is big O of n. So now if we think about solving this problem, so basically uh, here what we need to do is here uh, we need to, to conduct the meeting like uh, whose finish time is as small as possible from the remaining number of meetings. Now why so? For example, you have a meeting which starts at year and ends at year. You have another meeting which starts at year and ends at year. Now, if I conduct this meeting, it will end at year and what is the condition? Uh, if this is the first meeting, the second meeting, let's say the starting time is 1 and ending time is 8. Then the next meeting which I want to conduct should have starting time strictly greater than 8. It should not be even equal to. So it can be 9 or afterwards. So what I want is that the current meeting finishes as soon as possible. So if I conduct this meeting, this is the starting time. Let's say start one and this is finish one. This is start two and finish two. So uh, if I finish the first meeting as soon as possible, I can start with second meeting. So let's say I started with this meeting. Now it will finish here. And the second is this meeting. Okay, both cannot be done together because they have overlapping timings. And there is another meeting S3, which is uh, start Starting time is here and ending time is here. Now if I start with the first meeting it ends here. Okay. So I cannot conduct the third meeting. What would have been a better choice? Start with this. Don't conduct this meeting. So this ends as soon as possible and as soon as this ends you can start another one. Okay. Now this had starting time less than this. Even if it had starting time afterwards it would have not made a difference. For example this is S1. This is F1. This is S2 this is f2 this is s3 and this is f3 okay so even if this has a starting time afterwards but since this meeting finishes first so my target is to conduct this meeting why because as soon as this finishes i can start another meeting and one meeting can only start if its start time is greater than finished strictly greater than finish time of the previous meeting so if the finish time is small i have more options to start another meeting so that's why we choose this now what will be about the further meetings let's say here i had another meeting to get a better understanding here i had another meeting which ended here okay or i had a meeting which started here and ended here now First of all, I conducted S2 and not S1. Okay, uh, I mean not first meeting and second meeting because it had smallest finish time. What I told 
will conduct the meeting which has the smallest finish time first now the remaining meetings is this this and this okay let i let me call it s4 this is f4 this is s5 and this is f5 now what will i choose i will choose third meeting why because its ending time is as uh, is the smallest because see i can conduct either this or this or this i cannot conduct all three of them so because they have overlapping timings so i'll conduct the third meeting after the second meeting because its end time is very is the smallest among f3 f4 and f5 so as soon as this finishes if there is another meeting here s6 and f6 i can conduct that okay so what we want basically to do is we will short the meetings in the ascending order according to their finish time and we'll uh, say that obviously first meeting will be conducted and further will keep moving forwards and we will conduct those meetings uh, whose start time is greater than the previous meetings end time we need to keep updating the end time okay and uh, so all those meetings which can be conducted will be added to the answer and the end time will change accordingly now let's take an example to understand it better so now let's take this example this is the starting time of six meetings and this is the finish time of six meetings okay what i told we will for take the meeting whose finish time is the earliest so which meeting has the earliest finish time the first one so i'll conduct that okay it starts at one and ends at two okay so now this meeting is done see this meeting starting time was zero okay it was even before this but we will complete the meeting whose uh finish time is first so that other meetings can get a chance look here the starting time here s1 is less than s2 here s1 is greater than s2 but in both the choices second meeting was our choice why because it finished first now what is the smallest ending time this one but what what is the ending time at present end is equals to 2 the last meeting which i finished was at 2 so now uh, the starting time of this meeting whose ending time is the smallest from the remaining meetings is greater than the current ending time yes so i can conduct this also so my next meeting would be from 3 to 4 and my new end time would be 4 okay now the remaining meetings are this the smallest ending time is this okay uh, now is the start time of this meeting greater than end time of, of my current last meeting no this starts at 0 and this ends at 4 so i cannot start i cannot conduct this meeting so i'll put a cross here now uh, is this meeting uh, is this uh, this is the meeting with the smallest finish time from the remaining meetings what is the starting time 5 what is the previous meeting's ending time 4 so i can conduct this so i can conduct this so it will be from 5 to 7 and the new ending time will be 7 now uh, what are the two meetings who these are the two meetings okay so if i short them with respect to the ending time i will short them pairwise okay so this will come first now this has a starting time 5 which is uh, less than 7 so this cannot be conducted now look at this meeting this has starting time 8 which is uh, greater than 7 so that can be conducted okay so 8 to 9 so now the end time will become 9 but now there are no more meetings so the total 4 meetings can be conducted and they are first meeting, second meeting, fourth meeting and fifth meeting. So I will return this in my answer. Now let's look at its actual implementation. So if we look at the actual implementation so see I have been given starting time in the form of a vector, ending time, finish time in the form of a vector and is the total number of meetings. First of all I want to short the meetings with respect to ending time. But I also have to keep the respective starting time like I cannot just short the ending time. I need to attach with that the starting time of that meeting also right. And also since in the answer we want to return the numbers of meetings like first meeting, second meeting, fourth meeting which were conducted. So I also want the indexes. So what I have done is I have taken a vector pair of pair okay. So in this I will be storing details of three things. This will be the finish time of the meeting, this will be the start time of the meeting and this will be the meeting number, okay. So, and I have taken one vector answer in which I will add the meeting numbers which are going to be conducted. Now from i equals to 0 to n, I will push back in my vector a, finish time of the ith meeting, starting time of the ith meeting and its number, okay, meeting number. Please remember this vector is 0 indexed and in the answer I want the meeting in the one 
based form in the one indexed form okay if you look at the example the first second fourth and fifth meeting were conducted actually they are at zero one third and fourth indexes but here i want the meeting number and not the indexes so i am pushing i plus one now i will short it so it will get shorted on base dot based of what the first parameter that is the finish time okay now obviously the first meeting which is the smallest finish time has to be conducted because there is no previous meeting so i will say answer dot push the meeting number of the first meeting that is a of zero dot second okay so if it is the pair inside a pair so this is what this is a of i dot first dot first because it is the first value of this pair and inside that it is the first value okay and this is a of i dot first dot second okay because this is a uh, uh, this value is the part of the first pair and inside that it is the second element of the inside pair okay and what is how can i access this value it is a of i dot second because in this pair it is the second element okay this will give me the index this will give me the start time and this will give me the finish time so i have said that push back the meeting number that is a of 0 dot second this one and my new end time would be a of 0 dot first dot first this is a of 0 dot first dot first which is the finish time now for i equals to 1 to n onwards if the starting time of that meeting that is a of i dot first dot second this one if it is greater than the current end time or the end time of the previous meeting then answer dot push back the meeting number of that meeting and my new end time becomes equals to a of i dot first dot first now the meeting which i conducted the last so the new end time will be updated and in this way i'll uh, consider as many meetings as possible whenever a of i dot first dot second is greater than the end time of the previous meeting finally it is mentioned that so i have added all the meeting numbers in my answer vector finally it is mentioned that you need to return the meeting numbers in shorted order so i have finally shorted my array and finally returned the answer vector which contains the meeting numbers okay what will be the time complexity it will be big o of n log n why because there are n elements in the meeting and i am doing one short year which takes n log n time and i am also doing another short year okay what would be the auxiliary space the auxiliary space occupied here will be big o of n why because i am taking this vector a and also vector answer in which i will be adding elements here there can be at max n elements here there will be n elements so the auxiliary space will be big o of n now let's submit this code so let's submit it okay so we have solved this question successfully i hope you have understood the solution completely thank you